Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. Truth has no color. Amen. We are not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. And we'd like to thank you for listening to Blue Collar Catholic Radio. Hey, this is a good news item. This is what we call a praise report. In fact, that's what we're going to start calling them, praise reports, because that's what they are. Pro-life congressman Steve Scalise is out of ICU after he was shot by a liberal activist. Now, this is just the power of prayer. Amen. This, this is good news. We got to keep the prayers coming. This congressman, most people don't realize, he's one of the top pro-lifers in Congress, and this is definitely a praise report because we need him. And I also would like to call out people that are are trying to use politics for violence. We don't. That is unacceptable. And I say that because. There's a writer from the Huffington Post by the name of Jesse Ben. And the Huffington Post has been a place for the fringe left to spew their venom for many years. But this, uh, this writer for the Huffington Post, he tweeted basically that, uh, that shooting just one pro-life congressman isn't enough, that we, need one, that we need more violence. He actually said this in his tweet. He says, for violent resistance to work, it need to be organized Individual acts can be understandable, but likely counterproductive and ineffective. I don't know about you, but I think uh, hopefully the Huffington Post should be ashamed of having somebody like that representing their uh, their website. And I would just tell Mr. Jesse Ben, in case somebody can get this to him, please read James chapter 1 and 2, my friend. James chapter 1 and 2, because it tells you to watch your mouth. Watch what you say. And also, one more thing, I'll flip it over to Terry. The, the gentleman that shot the congressman, in case people are wondering, he, wa- he died from injuries at the hands of law enforcement right there on the spot. He was, uh, he was taken down by the police before they took him into custody. But uh, this guy, James Hodgkinson, 66 of Belleville, Illinois, he was an avid pro-abortion Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders supporter. And I say this because they found in his breast pocket, they found a, a paper with a, with a hit list of other pro-life members of Congress that he wanted to assassinate. So this was premeditated political assassination. Uh, I just hope and pray that Congressman just uh, uh, Scalise comes back to his post. We need him. And thank you for your prayers out there. Keep them coming. Amen. We've got many more topics, but I just want to mention... I was out this weekend up in the mountains, and I want to give a shout-out to the Families for Christ up there. They had 500 people on camping, and I got the power preach to them, and I was very honored to be there. Also, we had a women's conference here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Melissa, unbelievable story of her conversion story. It's available if you want to get that. Call the 877-526-2151. Women who have been wounded by sexual woundedness, you're going to want to hear her story. Every woman in that church was crying. I had to get all kinds of tissues. I was the only man there. I mean, I've never been in a church filled with women where they're just weeping. So I would encourage you to pick that up. It was a great conference. Also, have you ever thought about this? The connection between criminal gangs and the occult. We're going to talk about that. How about this? Have you ever thought about statistics on is there a connection with car crashes and legal pot? We're going to talk about that too. And... Have you ever thought about the states that have marijuana legalized, how that is affecting the illness of the people? What? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. And Jesse nailed it about the Sacred Heart enthronement. Yes, we've got all these challenges. What's the answer? Every time Jesse and Terry go on the air, we always have problem solution. Problem right now, the family's in disarray. The church has got some challenges also, I might add. And we're here to help you get through all this by giving your life to Jesus through the sacred heart of Jesus. Again, if you want to get the marijuana CDs that we did a couple months ago, if you haven't gotten those from Dr. Vince Fortunace, 
Jess Romero and Ruben Nava, they're great recordings, and I've seen the fruits already in a couple months that have helped people get off marijuana. If you want Jesse Romero's book on marijuana, go to jesseromero.com. If you want the CD conference CDs, especially Dr. Vince's, on how marijuana affects the brain, call 877-526-2151. So this is going to be an exciting show. Stay tuned. Also, at the end, we're going to give you a great news story about the power of the rosary. The power of the rosary against terrorists. Oh, man, you, you definitely want to, I love it. want to hear that final segment. But today's responsorial psalm, just to, uh, just to put some pep in your step, just to put some, uh, some spiritual gasoline in your, in your tank. Here it is, Psalm 33. It's the, today's psalm is, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Guess what? You can point at your chest and say, hey, that's talking about me. God chose me. I'm one of the chosen. Hopefully you're not one of the frozen chosen because if you're one of the frozen (laughs) chosen, you're listening to the right show because in this show, we're going to thaw you out. Here's another uh, (laughs) issue that's uh, in, in our culture right now. Yes. There's a Catholic school in the Diocese of Jefferson City, Missouri, They've just, it's a sad example of political correctness in affecting the church. This uh, Catholic school, it welcomes transgenders and same sex families. And it's, they have no problem admitting students who claim to have changed their genders to be transgender. Now, here's the problem uh, the, the, the Catholic school policy says this quote, wherever possible, enrollment is the goal, close quote. So they're saying, Bottom line is money. We want enrollment. We want money. We want uh, that. That's what it's all about. So what they're basically saying, here's what's going to happen to the kids in that Catholic school that are interacting with transgender students in the classroom or in the restroom or the cafeteria or sporting events or field trips. This new policy in that Catholic school, and this has happened in other Catholic schools as well. Here's what's going to happen. Those who call themselves transgender for the simple reason that uh, that it tells that, that we're telling them it's okay to ignore the reality and ignore your God given biology. This is misguided policy, okay? And this misguided policy is a scandal in this Catholic school. I'm very saddened by the Catholic Diocese of Jefferson City, and I'm shocked by their new student admission that welcomes same sex families and admits students who claim to be transgender. This policy is is not charitable to Catholic students and parents who are trying to live their faith. And it's even unfortunate to students who call themselves transgender because we're normalizing sin, we're normalizing behavior, and this offends God. And so, to, to me, this is scandalous, and uh, I would call this school to repent and go back to our Catholic principles. Well, Jesse, we also have uh, a bunch of bishops, 12 cardinals and bishops, condemning Uh, gender theory madness, and we'll get to that. But I want to just remind everybody what retired Pope Benedict said when he was the Pope. He said, to be sure, we do not possess the truth. The truth possesses us. Christ, who is the truth, has taken us by the hand, and we know that his hand is holding us securely on the path for quest for truth. So when we give you these teachings, this is not Jesse Romero's personal opinion. I could care less about Jesse's personal opinion or my opinion. I want to know what Christ's teachings are. That's what's going to set us free. Hey, we, we're going to take, oh, actually, let's get our anonymous on. He just wants to talk a little bit about the marijuana issue. Anonymous, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Hey, guys, thanks. I was just uh, at an ice cream shop the other day. I just wanted to share this with you. That was an interesting uh, fact that happened here. I was at an ice cream shop. I picked up a local paper. I live in Northern California. Flipping through the back, and it was one of those specialty papers. But there was at the end, there was like five or six or seven. I'm kid you not, probably ten full color page ads for like these marijuana, medical marijuana, and they had brownies and they had all kinds of special different names. Mm-hmm. It made it look like so exciting, and they said just come in for your consultation. Mm-hmm. I thought, how many people are going to be exposed to marijuana when they don't need it for medical purposes simply because we're 
making it like candy and treats, and it's like some sort of buffet yeah. where you come in and get your cookies. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I'd be curious to find out, somebody should do some research, maybe you guys know, mm-hmm. what does it take to be qualified to, under medical conditions, or can just anyone go and do it? Yeah, if you're breathing, you know? you'll, you'll qualify. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah, well, that's, it's, it's not it. It's not FDA regulated. <laughs> Medical marijuana has no FDA regulation, yeah. so it's basically uh, let's just be. It's like a boot. It's like a bootleg uh, industry, but because you have a lot of money from George Soros and uh, many liberal uh, politicians on both sides of the aisle, uh, this is why everybody's just basically saying, "Hey, this doesn't have to be regulated by the FDA. the The people want this. The people want this, and uh, they voted it in." So. Uh, that's just the way it is. It, it's been politicized. There's no, there's no medical value according to the federal government uh, for for marijuana. There's no medicinal value. It's a completely politicized, uh, uh, progressive, liberal piece of legislation that's uh, that's basically we're stuck with at this point. And anonymous, I just want to recommend we did a conference on the marijuana, uh, moral, uh, the mind and moral conscience. We had the popes. Mm-hmm. Uh, doctor here who's an expert on marijuana and the effects on the brain. So I would recommend you or any of the listeners to pick that up by calling 877-526-2151 or go to jesseromero.com and pick up his book on marijuana that shows the facts because what you just told me, yeah, it does shock me, but, you know, it it's going on all over the country and we need to speak well, up. On. Well, one, one thing here, 30 seconds. Hang on, we got, it. We got a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't turn that dial. This is the Terry and Jesse show. And uh, we've got a a person that wants to make one more comment. We'll be back. Back to the Terry and Jesse show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. Common sense Catholicism. We're going to go to the 12 cardinals and bishops that condemn gender theory after our caller gives us a quick story on uh, a friend that was dabbling in marijuana and the, and the consequences of that, uh, of that incident. Go ahead. You're on, caller. You're on, Anonymous. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to close with this, this story for those who think that it's you know, just not that, that harmless. And I had three friends in high school. They all started to use it in high school, and they started to come into school high. And eventually, two of these folks, went off and they had major problems with abusing pharmaceutical pharmaceutical drugs and both of them went through a divorce. The other one, unfortunately, started getting in serious, more serious drug and God rest his soul, he, he took his life. And so these uh, these are the three friends that I know of in, in, in high school that started messing around with it and it opens the door to other things. So I just think it, it may bring some sort of immediate gratification, but there are, I think, long-term consequences. Yep, I've that heard that. Yep. Yep. Here. Good, good point. Thanks again for your call. Uh, I think, uh, thanks, Anonymous. I think all of us, <laughs> Terry, myself, yep. everybody listening to, to Catholic Radio, we could multiply your story. Every one of us has stories just like yours, Anonymous. Every one of us. I have family members of mine that are sitting in prison right now, and they've told me I, I never should have took the, the first toke. It started with marijuana. I didn't stop there. I got into harder drugs, and I became a criminal. I got a, I, I, I'm not proud of it, <laughs> but I have a lot of family members in, in prison. All of them. I have family members that are gang members. All of them have told me it started with smoking marijuana. That was like first base. Okay, let's uh, give you a list of 12 cardinals that are giving us uh, apostolic Catholicism or Amen. common sense Catholicism. And, you know... The truth, especially when, it, when it's from a cardinal or a bishop, it, it cuts like a sharp sword through air in this whole gender theory madness. And these are bi- brave bishops that are clearly speaking out about this toxic fog spread by the transgender movement and its biology deniers. Uh, in, in clear terms, these clergy, they're calling gender theory what it really is. They're saying it's destructive. It's anti-reason, it's neo-Marxist, it's tyrannical, and it's a form of spiritual terrorism and demonic. The first bishop, Most Reverend James D. Conley from Bishop Lincoln, Nebraska, he's spoken out against it. Cardinal Robert Seurat, Prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, has spoken out against it. 
Cardinal Raymond Burke, patron of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, has spoken out this against a transgender madness. Cardinal Ruben Salazar Gomez, Archbishop of Bogota, Colombia, has spoken out against the transgender madness. Cardinal Jose Francisco Robles Ortega, Archbishop of Guadalajara, Mexico, spoken out against the transgender madness. Most Reverend Demetrio Fernandez Gonzalez, Bishop of Cordoba, Spain, spoke out against this transgender madness. Most Reverend Rudolf Voderholzer from Regensburg, Germany, Bishop, spoken out against this transgender madness. Uh, Most Reverend uh, Bishop Thomas Paprocki from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, Also, Bishop Frederick Bernard Henry of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Bishop uh, Thomas J. Tobin of Providence, Rhode Island. And Auxiliary Bishop of Salzburg, uh, Andreas Lon from Austria. Also, the Patriarch of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, Vyatoslav Shevuk. He's the Archbishop. Uh, He's also spoken out against it. Also, a joint statement of the Polish Bishops' Conference. Also, uh, the Council of European Episcopal Conferences, representing 45 countries in Europe, does not accept this this gender theory. And also, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has spoken out against it clearly. And one more I'm going to throw in there because I heard him speak out against it personally. I was there at a prayer breakfast. Bishop Thomas J. Olmsted from Phoenix, Arizona. I want to yeah. give. I just want to give one more comment that uh, Pope Benedict XVI, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, two weeks before he was made the Pope, he gave a a, a mass and he gave a a homily and he spoke to all of the bishops there and he said, very soon it will not be possible to state that homosexuality, as the Catholic Church teaches is an objective disorder and the structure of the human existence. Well, this man was prophetic, the Holy Father, back when he was Cardinal Ratzinger. And I just want to read one more thing. You can get all these pope, all these car- cardinals and popes that have said this from our website, catholicrc.org. But just listen to what I, I'm going to tell you. The, the bishops in, in Poland, they impressed me. I'll tell everybody that because they, they consecrated their whole country to the sacred art of Jesus. They've lived through so much suffering. Here's what they said. Because I got to say a short one. I mean, this is gender ideology movement is a product of many decades of ideological and cultural changes that are deeply rooted in Marxism, neo Marxism, endorsed by some feminist movements and the sexual revolution. This ideology promotes the principles that are totally contrary to reality and an integral understanding of human nature. The bishops of Poland. Why don't you really tell me what you think? You see, I like clarity because when we're ambiguous, I think that's when we have problems in the church and in society. So I appreciate someone just laying it out because I'm going to tell you, the man, uh, Martin Luther, said there comes a time when silence is a betrayal. And I'm going to throw it back to Jesse after I quote St. Pope Felix III. Yes, I'm fired up about this because I see the family being torn apart. Here's what the St. Pope Felix III said. Not to oppose error is to approve it. Not to defend truth is to suppress it. And indeed, to neglect to confound evil men when we can do it is no less a sin than to encourage them. Yes, Jesse and Terry will continue to talk about pro-life, pro-family. Even when it's legal in a country, we're still going to give people the truth. I'll tell you when we stop. When Jesse Romero and Terry Barber are dead, five minutes after our death, that's when we stop. Take it away. <laughs> hey, I got a, I got an email uh, to Terry and Jesse. Ter- and it's the email is Terry, Jesse. What does it mean in the Hail Holy Queen where it says we are poor banished children of Eve? What does that mean that we are poor banished children of Eve? If you want to see my response, go to my blog today and I re- answer that question. What does it mean in the Hail Holy Queen when it says poor banished children of eve i I tell you exactly what that means according to the mind of the catholic church yeah we are poor banished children of eve in a nutshell i'll tell you why because this ain't home all right we're in we're in a we're in a foreign country we're in a foreign world that we're at war this isn't home that's why we're poor banished children of eve as a result of original sin and actual sin We've been separated from God, but the good news is now we have the new Adam and the new Eve 
Team Jesus and Team Mary. Amen. Now through the new covenant, we are now sons of sons of God through Jesus Christ, his son. And we are also children of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so what it means to be poor banished children. So long as we're on planet Earth struggling with sin at war with the devil, the, the unbelieving world in the flesh, we will be poor banished children of Eve. It's talking about our fallen human nature, but we were made for greatness. We were made to live in a state of grace and to have, find union with God ultimately and to be children of Mary totally, completely, and metaphysically. All I can say is amen, brother. Hey, folks, I'm getting texts from people saying, hey, I tried marijuana and never bothered me to go to harder drugs. And what about sometimes when marijuana has helped people and their seizures? And I'm sure that these things have all happened. Here's what I want to say. It can't be every time you do this, this is the same response to everyone. But, but generally speaking, when you lose free will, see, this is what I'm going to say that people don't get. And I'm going to say it right now. Whenever you get drunk or you go get high on drugs, you lose a gift that God has given you, free will to choose good. You see, so when you're drunk and you're not doing what you should be doing because you've lost your free will. There's the sin! Yes, I called it. Objectively, it's sinful to lose your free will because it's a great gift. The only value in saying yes to God is you have the value to say no. And when you get high, you lose that. I can't say it any simpler. If you want to get the marijuana CDs that we did at the conference, just call that 877-526-2151 number or Melissa's conversion story of a woman who was wounded beyond I mean, I'm just saying, she was wounded in a big way. Ladies that are listening, if you've got sexual woundedness in your life, you're going to want to hear this CD. Call 877-526-215, and I'll give it to you because I want you to be healed by the blood of Christ. I've been looking around for a long time, and I wanted to find out somebody who would argue against why it's wrong to get intoxicated yeah. and uh, lose your sobriety. Yeah. So I started going back to the SUMA. And I went back to St. Augustine's writings, and that's exactly what my book's about. Yep. Uh, what, uh, what's wrong with marijuana? I'm quoting the giants of the church. I'm not quoting, uh, you know, some lightweight <laughs> theologian. And this is exactly my argument, my sustained argument. Once you lose your free will, and that's exactly what alcohol does Absolutely. and drugs do. Yep. You lose your free will, and once you lose your capacity of rational thought and you lose your capa- capacity to form your conscience properly according to the Word of God, that's where you're going to fall into sin because now you, you've given over your, your, yourself to intoxication. And I'll tell you another thing about intoxication that most people don't make the connection, but I do in my book. You open yourself up to demonic influence. You open yourself up to the demon world. A person who's sto- sober, sobriety is the first line of defense against demons. Somebody who's intoxicated has taken off the armor of God, as St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6. How do you put on the armor of God? Living in a state of grace. You're protected against evil spirits. Oh yeah, they can tempt you, but they can't do anything to you because your free will and your moral conscience is properly formed. That's the whole argument of my book. Amen. Uh, There's an article that we have here. We may not get to it, but it's an interesting read. You may want to read it on your own. It's called Criminal Gangs and the Occult. Oh, my gosh. You can get the article on CatholicRC.org or JesseRomero.com. You can get all today's articles. But this article shows the connection between street gangs and the demonic, the dark side. We're going to come right back. Don't hesitate to call us at 877-526-2151. We'll be right back. This is Bishop David O'Connell, and you're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show at Immaculate Heart Radio. Back to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. UFC Catholicism, what does that mean? Ultimate faithful Catholics. This is gym time. Amen. This is the Lord's gym. We are your spiritual fitness trainers. We have a great article. It's called Criminal Gangs and the Occult. It's the, the long history of Los Angeles street gangs and their members and how they flirted with the dark side of evil. It's written by an expert. His name is retired Sergeant Richard Valdemar from the L.A. Sheriff's Department. He is the U- United States expert on street gangs. And it's a great article. You can get it from CatholicRC.org 
or jesseromero.com. Uh, and also today, if you want to, somebody asks us a question, and I blog the answer. They ask a question about, uh, hey, Terry, Jesse, uh, what about, uh, what does it mean in the Hail Holy Queen when it says that we are poor, banished children of Eve? If you want to see the answer, I wrote quite a lengthy answer theologically. Go to my blog. And uh, here's one more thing from Fulton Sheen today. I always like to try to get into the good, the good, Full the good the, my favorite bishop. Uh, he talks about God's knowledge of things. So yeah. if you want to know, because people ask, so what type of knowledge does God have? I also blog that. I've got his quote today. It's on jesseromero.com. Go to my blog. I got Archbishop Sheen's daily quote. And today he talks about God's foreknowledge. The fact that God knows everything at the same time. Let's, we're going to move on to now to these pot articles yep. that we have here. Uh, first article we have is what? Well, we have the legal pot car crashes. Yes, there's a link. I mention this because what we're going to talk about is some of the states like Colorado, Oregon, Washington correlates to about a 3% increase in auto collision claims uh, frequencies compared to the states without such legislation illegalizing Marijuana. See, so more drivers admit to using marijuana, and it's showing up more frequently among people involved in crashes. As a matter of fact, so much so that the insurance companies are concerned about this because they're having more claims, and that means more money to be paid out. So I, according to the HLDI, past researchers have been able to definitively connect marijuana use with real-world crashes, and even a federal study failed to find a, such a link. Studies on the effects of legalizing marijuana for medical use have also been inconclusive. Okay, instead, the group focused on three states. Colorado, where legal marijuana retail sales started in 2014, so we got a little history here, as well as Oregon and Washington, where sales began in 2015. Compared them to collision claims in neighboring states such as Nevada, Utah, parts of which now allow only medical marijuana. It's also Colorado saw the largest estimated increase in claim frequency, 14% more than on its bordering states. I could go on, but here's my bottom line. Do you want to be safe on the road? I do. I don't want to see DUIs on the road. Those people could kill me. I mean, obviously, I'm worried that they'll kill themselves. But anything I can do to prevent people being drunk on the air on the road I want to see that stopped. I want people to not be able to do that. So how is that going to happen when you start having marijuana uh, available in every place? And and my point is, are you concerned about your family's safety when you go on the road? I am. What? How do we fight intoxication, period? Not only marijuana, yeah. but any any DUI, drug yeah. uh, and, and, and alcohol. Yeah. It seems like we live in a... In a hedonistic society where people just want to be tillated. Yeah. They want to always feel stimulated. They also want, always want to feel good. There's this, uh, there's, a, there's this aversion to suffering or just sobriety. So what do we need? What does a person need to overcome drug addiction? Have you ever thought about that? Here's what we need. We need to embrace a life of virtue. So what does virtue mean? That's the answer. It means moral excellence. That's what it means. Yep. It means right living. It means goodness. And virtue is a good quality, okay? It comes from the, the Latin word virtus, which means manliness or virility. That's what it means. So how do we acquire virtue as a Catholic? How do we acquire moral excellence? By education. Number one, we have to know our faith. This is why Catholic radio is so important. Mm. Education helps you acquire virtue, okay? What's another way we acquire virtue so that we don't... Uh, fall into these these tendencies of becoming intoxicated all the time. Okay, well, virtue has to be practiced, Absolutely. repetition, deliberate acts, persevering, repeated efforts. When you do this, when you practice good habits all the time, what happens? It purifies your personality, and you're elevated by God's grace if you're receiving the sacraments. So when you're trying to do the right thing. This will be assisted and elevated by the power of the sacraments. And also another thing, just on a basic human level, I don't know if you realize, somebody who follows moral goodness is happier. People Absolutely. that have a, that follow a life of virtue, moral goodness, and right living, they're happier than people that follow a life of vice. It's a fact. 
One of the things that I believe St. Alphonsus Liguori tells us, there's no more efficacious means of subduing the passions or or resisting temptation and consequently avoiding sin than by the remembrance of the presence of God. You see, what you just said, Jesse, about practicing virtue, this preserves us from sin, it increases our faith, it strengthens our hope, it perfects our love, and I might add it even brings us closer to our guardian angel. So we have a problem. The solution is always the same. It's Jesus Christ. I want to mention before I throw it back to Jesse, if you uh, are convinced that this marijuana is still okay for, for people, I would ask you to get Dr. Vince's CDs on the uh, effects that it has on, on the brain, okay? This is the expert on the brain, and he's got a 20-year study on marijuana. Uh, he, he, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. Nobody would want to hear this on secular radio. We put him on our radio show to tell everybody this. If you want to get that marijuana conference CDs to help your son or daughter or, or husband off marijuana, call us at 877-526-2151. And by the way, I just got a notice. On our website, catholicrc.org, there's a section for if you're going to sell your house. We have a Catholic called Pro-Life uh, Real Estate that will give the uh, service to a, a on-fire Catholic real estate agent. And a portion of the sale of your commission that you pay the agent goes back to the CRC. So I'd ask you, you you're going to be selling your house? Go to Catholic RC and get a pro-life uh, you know, agent to sell your home rather than Joe Secular. That's all I'm asking. And again... If you want to pick up CDs on marijuana or if you want to pick up Jesse's book on marijuana, go to jesseromero.com or call us at 877-526-2151. Yeah, one of the things, one of the things I have in my book is I show you exactly yeah. how marijuana shrinks the brain. Absolutely. That's a fascinating section. Just a fact. So, uh, you know, it's it, 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 if if you want to be dumber, go ahead and smoke pot every day, I guess. <laughs> Because the facts are, I mean, any brain surgeon you talk to, Andrew Newberg, Dr. Vince Fortenace, anybody you talk to, yep. they'll tell you. And they'll tell you exactly what it does to the f- prefrontal cortex, the, pl- the place where thought comes from and reason comes from. All that stuff's in my book. But here's the good news, because somebody's saying, man, I don't want to have a small brain, Jess. I want to have a bigger brain. You want to have a – you want to maintain your brain capacity? I also have a chapter in my book <clears> – <throat> which is what prayer does to the brain. And guess what? Praying 15 minutes a day Amen. helps keep your brain the, the size that you presently have it, and it's, it prevents reduction of the brain. It prevents Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. 15 minutes of prayer. So uh, how about you bet. we stop the pot and we start praying instead? How about we do that? Before we go to a break, I'm going to ask Jesse to tell a story talking about prayer praying jesse's going to visit a gentleman tonight to pray with him and i want our listeners to understand the power of catholic radio tell that story jess well i was going to share the third set and the fourth oh, segment. okay I, then I, i'll I tease him to, on it okay uh, exactly I'll, I'll tease you. okay leave. then let me just say this i want to mention this those who think that this marijuana because it's legal it's okay think about abortion think about same-sex marriage all these things are legal but you got to remember you know that we as Christians stand for God's laws over man's laws. So if man's laws, like, for example, there's a gentleman in Illinois. He's a doctor. He's being forced by the state. We're going to talk about him later in the week. Being forced by the state to, to give referrals to women for abortions. And he said, I won't do it. So the state says, well, you're going to lose your license. You're going to lose this. And he said, rather, I'd rather lose my license than my soul. See, that kind of guy inspires me today because he made a stance for life. And this is what the Terry and Jesse show is all about. We're not here to just entertain you. You know what we're here for? We're here to inform you to get to heaven. And I'm going to tell you right now, in a world that we're living in that acts like God doesn't exist, we need to be God's presence in the world today by speaking in love and devotion the truths of the faith, in season and out, and even when it's uncomfortable. Because I'll tell you, without Good Friday, there's no Easter Sunday. And right now, you, our listener, need to speak up for Christ's sake. Because right now, if you don't speak up, who will? And what happens when evil abounds is when good people stop speaking the truth. Here's one more article we have. I'm wondering if you've seen this article. It says, 
illness tied to marijuana rising in states where weed is legal. So there's an illness that's tied to marijuana users, and it's on the rise in states where the use of the drug has been legalized. This illness, uh, Lance Crowder, uh, one of the patients and one of the victims of this illness, he says he finally got an answer for his two years of abdominal pains and vomiting in an Indianapolis emergency room. What's the illness called? CHS. <laughs> Cannabinoid hypermesis syndrome. So what does that mean? We'll just call it CHS. CHS is a new sickness and it's caused by using different forms of marijuana, either too much or too long. And so what does it cause? Severe abdominal pains and vomiting. And doctors are saying the only thing that they can do to help relieve the symptoms is hot baths or showers. And doctors say the only way you can stop this is by getting off of marijuana cold turkey. Another good reason yet to get off of marijuana. Don't change that dial. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. I don't care if you're five or 105. <laughs> God from all eternity chose you to be where you're at right, right now at this time in history. Why? To change the world. Amen. You're saying, man, who am I? What can I do? Let me tell you, if you're breathing and you got two legs and you're a baptized Catholic, Amen. guess what? You're called the holiness, Amen. period. And truth has no color. Let's remember, what's the mission and, uh, and what's the goal of our life? Here's what the goal is, in case you never heard it. We're all called to be great saints. Yep. What? Yep. Say it again. We're all called to be great saints. So what am I telling you? Don't miss the opportunity. Doesn't get any better than this. Great story here of, Oh yeah. can you imagine how, how would you feel? Let me pitch this as a question. Yeah, set the stage. How would you feel? If you're one of your children, well, let's go. Let's get even Make it personal. more specific. If your daughter yeah. was kidnapped by terrorists, Ugh. how would you snatched right out of your arms from terrorists? Unbelievable. Well, guess what? This happened. This happened to a family over in in uh, Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, this uh, young girl was kidnapped by ISIS. The girl's father, the, the girl's name, Christina. And Christina's father, his name is Kudor Ezo. Here's what happened, basically. About five months ago, after uh, ISIS had come in to this war-torn uh, place called Mosul, they came into this city in the northern region of Iraq and they came in and they just started basically kidnapping kids. And they took this young girl, Christina, from the arms of her father. Oh. And uh, they, he, he had no idea where they took her. Well, this father, obviously, w- when you have no weapons, because the Catholics there don't have any weapons. They can't protect themselves. Okay, And the terrorists have all the weapons, so they come in with an army and all the weapons. Uh, there's not much you can do, trust me. Once they take your kid off your arms, they'll probably beat you up and ri- pistol whip you, and that's it. You're knocked out. By the time you wake up, your daughter's gone. So he's been thinking, where is my daughter? Where is my daughter? She's been kicked out by ISIS. Well, guess what? This father, you know how he fought back? He fought back like a real man. He got on his knees. Amen. He turned, he turned his bedroom into a war room. Yep. And that's what we should all be doing with all our bedrooms, turning our bedrooms into war rooms. What do I mean by that? That should be the place where we're on our knees before the burning bush and pleading our case before God. So basically, he started praying the rosary daily for the return of his kidnapped daughter. And his prayers were finally answered. The six-year-old Christina has been restored to her family. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, thanks be to God, the parish priest, he's a Syrian Catholic priest. He's a longtime friend of the family. His name is Father Ignatius Augie. He's saying this is a miracle. 
This little girl's return is a miracle. He says, this never happens. When ISIS takes, steals your kids, you never see them again. That's right. So he says, what happened with Christina, her family, and with us is a divine miracle, exclaimed Father Augie. And I have to say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is our great news story. And on our website at CatholicRC.org or JesseRomero.com, we mentioned illness tied to marijuana rising in states where it's legal. We talked a little bit about a, a situation, but legal uh, legal marijuana use is is rising in the U.S. and the world, just in the world, too, both for medical and recreational purposes. In the United States, just to give you an update, 26 states, over half, have legalized pot for medical use, with eight of them, plus the District of Columbia, legalizing it for recreational use as well. CBS reported illness is rarely diagnosed in states where marijuana isn't legal, which can be attributed to doctors not knowing about or not assuming the CHS, in addition to patients not wanting to disclose they have been using <coughs> illegal substance. The illness usually clears up within a few days of stopping marijuana. I just want to encourage you, if I'm speaking to you right now, okay? You're using marijuana. <coughs> You don't want your brain to shrink. You can stop right now by an act of the will by asking Jesus Christ to give you the grace to say no to yourself. And I guarantee you, your health will get better because you're not using marijuana. And not only your health, I'm going to say your spiritual life. And I'll tell you why again. Because now you're going to have clarity to give your life to Christ. When you're high, you lose that will to choose good over evil. I'll say it again. Your free will is the great gift that God has given to us. So if I'm talking to you, I'm going to mention it to everybody. Not whether you're using marijuana. All of us need to go to confession. We all need to get right with God. And so I want to encourage, as a spiritual fitness trainer, that at least once a month, we all start going to confession, making visits to the Blessed Sacrament, and I might add, praying the Daily Rosary, Our Lady's Peace Plan from Heaven, Our Lady of Fatima's 100th Anniversary. Get your rosaries out. Get your Bibles out. Yes, this is the spiritual. Yes, this is the Lord's gym. I'm asking you for a spiritual workout so that you can fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ. And if you want those CDs on marijuana, if you want the CDs from Melissa, who has that wonderful conversion testimony of a woundedness of her own life, call us at 877-526-2151. I want you to have this because I want to see you in heaven. The two specific virtues that we need to practice and cultivate to overcome uh, intoxication is prudence and temperance. Okay, it's well said. We got to build spiritual muscle. That, that's that's right. what when I talk about building up your virtues, what I'm talking about is building spiritual muscle. Yep. Prudence is that virtue that gives us the ability to understand right and wrong, to discern what's good in every circumstance. And how do you do that? You do that through a life of prayer. Through prayer and through reading the Bible, the daily mass readings, you're going to develop a very strong understanding of what's right and wrong. You're going to be a, develop an understanding of, of what it means to be sober and how to reason properly. Because basically, you know, what is prudence? It's right reason and action, according to St. Thomas Aquinas. And... and Here's another analogy that St. Thomas gives us. I think this will help you, okay? All, all of us, we're like men on a chariot. Every single one. We're like men on a chariot, okay? And we got two horses that are pulling us. The two horses are the passions mm -hmm. and the appetites, okay? That's right. So these, these horses are pulling us. The irascible appetites and the concupiscible appetites, okay? They're pulling us. Let's just make a simple call. The passions, okay? The passions to anger and the passions towards sex. Make it simple. Yep. Those are the two horses that are pulling us. Now, how, how do you as a charioteer, how do you control those horses that are pulling you? Well, you have reins. You have those ropes that you're able to control these horses, these passions. What are the two reins? One rein is prudence. The other one is temperance. Temperance means it's that moral virtue that gives us the ability to moderate the attraction of pleasure. And it provides us this balance in the use of God's created goods. That's what we need to control the horses, the wild horses that we call the passions. 
Because if you don't control the passions, trust me, you're going to make a train wreck of your life. Well said. I want to give Bishop Athanasius Schneider, who we've interviewed here, a, a little bit of a time. Because if you read, if you go on our line, uh, online to catholicrc.org or jesseromero.com, we have Enthronement of the Sacred Heart, the spiritual anchor of the domestic church. Here's what Bishop Athanasius said. In our time, natural family... And the Christian family have become the principal object of attack for the destruction of the civilized world by neo-Marxist gender ideology. Paradoxically, we are living in an age of the family precisely because it's under attack. It is today that the family is called to witness to divine beauty of its essence and of its vocation. Think about this. The perfected end of Catholic marriage, mom and dad, is not merely begetting children, but rather rearing the children for the glory of God. In other words, get them to heaven. So the sacrament of marriage and the blessing of the home serve as essential prerequisites to the third and crowning component of the church and of the family, consecration. So I'm going to encourage everyone. And Jesse, you didn't tell us what you're going to do and ask for prayers, brother. we got a minute or two. So I'm going to ask you if you can just briefly ask for the prayers of our listeners. Some guy texted me last night, uh, and he said, I want to kill myself. Uh, they're taking me to the hospital right now. Uh, I'm depressed. Uh, and he's already tried to kill himself in the past, so this is not a, this is not a bogus. Uh, so I got a hold of the daughter and stuff, and I was talking to her. She says, he's okay. He's in the hospital. He, and I said, well, let me talk to him. I talked to him. I said, uh, when you get home, he said, they're going to discharge you tomorrow, hopefully. I said, when you get home, I said, I'm going to go over to your house because I found that he lives Near uh, probably about 15 miles from me, so it's mm. not that far. Mm. And I said, we're going to consecrate your house to Jesus Christ. He goes, what's that? I said, I'm going to show you. We're going to go through a consecration because he says he sees things in his house. He hears no- things move. He hears voices. He lives by himself. His wife left him. It's, he's in a dark spot in his life right now. And I said, I'm going to teach you what it means tonight, how to live in a state of grace and then we're going to do a sacred home consecration, you and I. You're you're the ho- you're the priest of your home, so you're gonna. I'm going to give you the book, and I'm going to respond, and we're going to consecrate your house to Jesus by installing a sacred heart picture Beautiful. in the middle of your living room. So hey, you know that's called evangelization and yep. stuff. Uh, evangelization isn't just talking the talk. Sometimes you got to actually, you know, put your shoes on and go do something. And you're our family, so we're asking you as a family member to pray for Jesse. And later in the week, I'm going to tell you about another similar story that Immaculate Heart Radio is saving lives every day because we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesse's going to do. So I ask you for your prayers, and we'll report back to you how it goes because in our family, we're all one big family. Folks, such a fun time to be with you. Thanks for being with the Terry and Jesse Show. If you want to get those resources on the marijuana cd conference call us at 877-526-2151 if you want melissa's amazing story of her conversion who was a woman that had been sexually molested oh it's an amazing story call 877-526-2151 full sheen ahead we'll see you again tomorrow